hey y'all um share this when you get it um if i look tired it's because i was up all night um managing crisis um um, but share this when you get this. I have something that uh, that I need to say. In fact, let me um, let me go and get my other phone so that I can share it um, to the um, church's page. Okay, pick it up. Um, go ahead and share this. I have something that uh, that I need to say. It's probably going to upset some people, potentially some pastors, but. It needs to be said, saints. Um, and um, I'm walking through my house, so give me a second. I was wrestling with whether or not to hop on here and say this. Um, normally, about things like this, I'll call Bishop and uh, see if he is okay with me saying what I'm about to say. So this is one of those times where I'm gonna have to just say it and ask for permission later. I may ask for forgiveness later if, if uh, what I'm about to say is out of order. But we need to have a conversation um, as Christians, um, as these states begin to open up, um, as these states begin to open up. Um, I just I just had this conversation actually with someone who um, is the, sorry, I, got some, I see some oatmeal in my teeth. I was eating my oatmeal. Um, I just had a conversation with one of my clients about this. Um, and in the middle of talking about it, I said, you know what? I need to go ahead and just go live about this and just get this off my chest because I don't think that people really understand what is happening here. Um, however, it needs to be said. Um, so right now, a lot of Southern states are preparing to open up um, in the next week or so. I just found out that uh, Mississippi, which was the last state to shut down, is gonna be the first state to open. And uh, apparently they're not even opening with restrictions. Like apparently any, any group of people can meet when they open, which is terrifying. And so what I'm on here suggesting to you guys is this, you need to pray for your pastors, but you also need to encourage them to delay opening as long as possible. Even if their states lift complete restrictions, ask them to delay. And here's why. Um, there is, um, a very sinister thing happening. Um, and I need you to be clear about the the statistics. They have already been predicting uh, a surge in May and in June, a deadly surge. Like we have not seen the worst of COVID, right? This is literally the calm before the storm. Like according to science, even according to your governments, there's gonna be a surge in May. Hush Harper, and a, be quiet, and a surge in June. We know this because they are turning the empty schools and empty businesses into emergency COVID hospitals. Here in Memphis, I saw someone from Local 24 inside the Pipkin building that is, that is an event center, right? Where Harper stopped, where people have expos. That building is now a COVID hospital. Our old newspaper building, that giant building um, on Union, down the street from my house, is now being turned into a COVID hospital. I found out yesterday that some of our Shelby County schools that are closed are being prepped to be COVID hospitals. While they're opening cities, they are preparing to have not enough beds and ventilators for the people who are going to get COVID in May and June. This is important because we know that based on statistics, be quiet, that the people who are more likely to contract it and the people who are more likely to die are who? Black people and poor people. What is the congregation uh, demographics of black churches, black people and poor people? You need to be praying and communicating directly to your pastors to hold off opening, even if they open up the cities without restrictions. Because what is happening is these white men in government have realized that if they open up the city, it's going to kill black people and poor people. And guess what? They don't need black people and poor people to get reelected. So they would rather simulate the economy at the expense of killing black people. Um, and, and they are doing that. And the way that they're going to do that is if black people and poor people congregate. Where do black people and poor people congregate? 
black churches, black pastors. We have to stand together. We have to delay opening as long as possible because when people congregate, the disease, the virus spreads, right? And the places and people that it is spreading the most at has been among black people and poor people. And the places where there have been outrageous outbreaks because of congregating have been in churches. You saw it in Alabama. You saw it in Mississippi. You saw it in Georgia. We have the opportunity to take a stand and to protect our members. And that means holding off on opening until it is safe. They are predicting a surge in May and June. They are preparing for a surge in May and June. But they are opening the cities because their white backers are saying we need the money. And the research is saying that black people and poor people will die. They are not concerned with your lives. And the only people that can protect black people from gathering in large spaces. Sorry, y'all. David Anderson, stop calling me, bro. Uh, I'll talk to you later in a minute. But the only way that we can save black people Head and poor people. Be quiet, Harper. If, you, if you're quiet, you can, you can have your snack when I'm done. But I need you to be quiet. Mom, sit, sit down. Uh-uh. You don't have on pants, so you can't talk to the people. Go sit down. But sit down. I want to share. Not right now. We can share, share in a minute. Black people and poor people, right? Black people and poor people. And so we have to be careful. And the thing is, like these businesses, some of these pastors feel pressure to open as soon as possible because y'all ain't been tithing while you streaming. You ain't been giving while you streaming. And so they feel like if they don't open, they're going to have to close permanently. So this is how you help your pastor. Harper, if you keep talking, you're going to have to go to timeout. This is serious. I'm not playing right now. Right? <laughs> The way you help them is by giving the way you're supposed to, by praying for them and letting them know that you're willing to wait until it's safe. Let them know you're willing to wait until it's safe. There are people online that are clowning and excited about opening. And so some pastors think that you want to go back to the building. Let them know you're willing to wait until it's safe and pay your tithes. Pay your tithes and stream. Some of them are looking at these numbers and they think that you are not connected anymore. Pay your tithes, stream, and let your pastors know that you will wait. Because if you don't, let me tell you what's about to happen. Black people are going to die in large proportions. And then your congregations are going to be decimated by this virus. And let me tell you why I think this to be true. Sit down. I told y'all that God had given me Passover and that we prayed about Passover. We did a fast about Passover. Listen to this. And the Passover is over. It ended April 16th. A lot of people think it ends on Easter. No, it ended on April 16th. But the thing about Passover that people miss while we celebrating Passover is that it was supposed to take them 11 days to get to the promised land. But they wondered for 40 years because they did not make the right decisions. They wanted to go back to normal, right? They wanted to go back to normal. They were uncomfortable with the new normal. And since they were uncomfortable with the new normal, they wanted to go back. And it took them 40 years to get to the promised land. It was only supposed to take 11 days. But they made bad decisions because they did not like the new normal. Passover just ended. We have the opportunity to make good decisions and to deal with our discomfort in an effort that we would get through this faster. Or we can make a bad decision and deal with the fallout of COVID for decades, which is what will happen. They are already predicting that even at this rate, we would continue to have to social distance at different intervals until 2022. But if we band together, black pastors, I'm just talking to you. I'm not talking to white pastors. Well, maybe Life Church because they got a lot of black people. I'm not talking to predominantly white churches because unfortunately this disease is not disproportionately impacting your congregations, but black pastors be careful, be vigilant and operate in integrity because what is about to happen can destroy your entire congregation. People are going to die. The science has already told us. And the thing about it, Memphis is even if Memphis has restrictions, South Haven doesn't have restrictions. So the people that want to congregate can go right across the city and club, right across the city and go to eat. And then they're coming back to you, right? And so even if you say only 50 of us are going to gather, those 50 people might have gone across the state to some place where they can do whatever they want. Y'all, we have to be careful. Passover just ended. And the season after Passover ended is not a time to celebrate. It's a time to make good decisions. And it's a time to adjust to the new normal. Right? 
We have to stand together. And this is going to tick some pastors off. I'm fully aware of that. But I do not care. Right? I do not care. Because the science is there. And here's the thing. Y'all were so excited about that COVID-19 prayer. But that is because I am a award-winning researcher. People don't realize that I won Amber Cams in 2008. The American Medical Biomedical Research Society's Award for my biomedical research. I was a Mark U. Star scholar, scholar in college. I worked in labs, right? I, the reason why my sermons are written the way they're written is because I'm a researcher. God called me to preaching, but I wanted to be a professor, right? Latrice is on here right now. She went to college with me. I wanted to be a professor in science, like biomedical research and the crosshairs of behavioral science. That's what I wanted to do. And so the reason why I was able to look up those terms and put those terms together is because it was always in me. I just didn't know how to pair it with my calling to preach until now. But I am telling you, listen to Dr. Fauci, right? Listen to him. The man is being truthful, and there is a way for you to be a believer in Christ and to operate in wisdom. My grandmother always says there is a fine line between faith and foolishness, and a lot of us are going to let foolishness that appears to be faith kill our congregations. There's a perfect will of God, and there's a permissive will of God. The perfect will of God is what he preordained for you before you were formed in your mother's womb. The permissive will is what God will allow you to do because he gives you choices. Christ does not force us to do anything. God does not force us to do anything. If God forced us to do things, Adam and Eve would have never fallen. We have always had the ability to choose. And right now, as believers and as pastors, we have the right to choose. And so even if they open up your city, Operate in prudence and refuse to open up your doors until this line flattens because you don't want an outbreak in your church. You don't want to have to bury people on Skype because you can't even go to the funeral. You don't want your members to die alone. Hear me clearly. If you die of COVID, you die alone. Nobody can hold your hand. Nobody can hold your hand when you die of COVID. Nobody can watch you take your last breath. No, do you want to do that no. to your members? No. Mom, 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 mommy. You I have an opportunity to operate in wisdom and hear my cry. Now is not the time to open up churches. It's not the time. We have proven that people can gather online. We have proven that people can give online. You, I know you want to get out the house. I want to get out the house. I want to touch people too, right? But you do not need to open right now. The curve is not flattening. We, we, we only had 30 cases three days ago, and then we had 60, and then we had 100. The curve in Tennessee is flattening, but the curve in Memphis and Nashville is not flattening. Why? Because people won't stay home. I saw somebody yesterday say the whole state finna get off punishment, but Memphis, Deshaun, Tennessee can't sit his hard headed self down. We need to sit down, y'all. Right? We need to sit down. You see how this is ripping through the Kojic denomination? They lost like 15 bishops. It is potentially about to be an entire changing of the guard for an entire denomination. And nobody could go to their funerals. Nobody. Black church, sit down. Nobody. The government is strategically positioning itself to kill black people because they know black people going to do it. They know we're going to open up our churches and they want right to flatten the curve. You know how you can flatten the curve? Kill enough people. So the curve is going to be flat one way or the other. But the most powerful institution, I don't care what people say. The most powerful institution in the black community is still the black church. We still have the power. Now, I consider myself just to be a church with a black pastor, but most of my members are black, right? I do have members of other cultures, but most of my members are black. And, I, and the ones who are not black, most of those have black children. Be clear. And black people are more likely to die and more likely to be impacted. And so if you got black people in your church, 
Or you passed the people with black children. You have no business opening up this week or next week. The government is setting itself up for overflow hospitals because they know there's going to be a surge. They know they're going to run out of beds. They know they're going to run out of respirators. And you know why they may run out of beds and why they may run out of respirators? If black people gather in hundreds and thousands. Where do black people gather in hundreds and thousands? The black church. Where is high cholesterol and hypertension high? The black church. Why? Because we eating chicken every Sunday. Don't do it. Call your pastor. Call your bishop. Call your overseer. Call whoever you got to call and say, I'm praying for you. I'm sending my tithes today, and we ain't got to open. Right? I told y'all a few weeks ago to pay your tithes. And the reason why I was saying pay your tithes was not for me. I said at your other churches, because the well-makers going to tithe. They tithe at midnight on payday. But a reason why a lot of other pastors are afraid to keep their doors closed is because they think their doors ain't going to never open because some of y'all don't even need to stop tithing, but you just ain't been tithing. Give to your church. Let your pastor know you're praying. And check on your pastor. Y'all, it has been... All of my pastor friends are dealing with crises that ain't even COVID-related. Mental illness is on the rise. Drug addictions and abuse and alcohol abuse is on the rise. People are suicidal right now. Kids running away. All these things are happening, and your pastors are dealing with that and the fallout of COVID. So check on your pastor. Let them know you're still committed. Let them know you're still committed in finance and in prayer, and tell them they don't need to come. They don't need to open. Black churches need to be the last churches to open. And I know this is gonna make somebody mad. They're gonna say, "Where is your faith?" This. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. The faith during the Passover was what kept people inside, not what took them outside. Go back and study the text. And what happened after that was 40 years of something that could have went away in 11 days. I'm telling y'all, if everybody had just sat still for two weeks, this could have been over. But we didn't. And, and they're saying, right, this is something that we could see seasonally. And there's multiple strands. That prayer I prayed talked about eight strands, but it may be other strands now, which is why I said in any unknown strands. So this is why this could go on for 40 years, because, be clear, the strands keep coming. They don't have enough data. They said don't wear masks. Then they said wear masks. They said it can't travel on your shoes. Then they said it travel on your shoes. They said six feet projectory. Now they're saying 12 feet projectory. They are learning every day. This is a novel virus. Novel means new, never been seen, never been infected. Your b- b- human bodies have never had it. They don't know how to trace it. And so until they know how to trace it and until they know how to control it, we need to stay home. And who needs to stay home more than anybody else? Black people. There are people in my personal life that are mad at me now because I fussed at them because they won't stay home. I am serious, y'all, because there are people who have stayed home and still got impacted by somebody who didn't stay home. We have to be responsible with our bodies and with our spirits. And God has blessed us with the Internet. So your spiritual life does not have to suffer. So call your pastor, text your pastor, email your pastor, send your tithes and your offering. Send your prayers and your encouragement and your well wishes and then let them know that you are committed to your church and that you would like to stay home until it is safe. I love y'all. I'm praying for y'all. But this is so serious. This is a clear demonic attack on the black community. And if y'all don't see it, COVID ain't an attack on the black community. COVID is a pandemic. But this opening up the cities before the surge is an attack on the black community because black people are more likely to be essential workers. They work in restaurants. They work in hospitals. Like we may not be most of the doctors and lawyers, but guarantee you, baby, we're going to be most of those housekeepers. We're going to be the people in the cafeteria. We're going to be the people that's working in Kroger. We're going to be the people in the Kroger plant. That's a grocery store for those of you that are not in Memphis. We the people that's working for Instacart now because we lost whatever other job we had and we still got to pay for our families. And we're also the people who have hypertension because we can't get vegetables because we live in food deserts. We the people with diabetes because we eat canned goods because we can't get fresh food. We are more likely to die from COVID and more likely to get it because our lifestyles do not let us stay at home. So for as much as you can stay at home, 
Good job. In my dad, Good job. Dad, so for as much as you can stay at home, you need to stay at home and you definitely don't need to be leaving your house to go places where large groups are gathering. Right? So go to work if you got to provide for your family. But you do not have to gather in groups of 500 and 1,000. You do not. They're going to be so mad. I'm not telling you to quit your church, and I'm not telling you not to participate in your church worship activities. I'm telling you not to congregate. That's why they're not having concerts. Memphis in May is happening in October. Be careful, y'all, but watch these numbers. Watch these numbers. They have already said that the surge is going to happen between mid-May and mid-June, and they opening up Memphis on May 5th. Cinco de Mayo. Go to Happy Mexican if you want to. I'm praying for y'all. But you need to stay your butt home. I love y'all. Hey, what's up, everybody? Hope all is well with you. Listen, make sure you hit that notification thing down there. And also, hit that bell, okay? Hit that bell so that you're never left out, you're never confused, you're never wondering as to what I posted was I on, or are you guys lost, or, hmm. It, what is King really doing, okay? Just make sure I hit that notification, and make sure you subscribe. I love you guys. Talk to you later.